has lost everything For the wife who feels betrayed The child who is afraid For the home that is broken By the scars of sin and shame There is hope and there is healing In the power of Jesus' name there is a way, there is a light, there is life in the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, you can be saved, He paid the price. is longing for love for the mind who's so confused the one who is abused for the world that needs mercy and the truth that makes us free there's forgiveness and cleansing at the cross of Calvary adlaw sa ato tanan mga kapaglaom ilabinag sa mga tigpamina ug tiglantaw sa atong Hope Channel South Philippines welcome sa ato ang series na gitawag og Mission Refocus ako day tuod si Brother Ellie usa ka batan-on diri sa Northeastern Mindanao Mission og usa ka treasurer diri sa South Western Philippine Union Conference Mas Amikos mga kapaglaom we are so grateful to see Ato mga kabatan una nagalihok dere sa southwestern part here sa Philippines labaw na sa recently concluded nato na Global Youth Day o Global Youth Week of Prayer and bless kita mga kapaglaom kaya ato mga batan on geared up pud siya sa ato mga activities na malabot sa ining tuiga Did you know mga kapaglaom last year ang atong iglesia naga celebrate pud sa usa ka tremendous na 160 years na kita gipili para sa mission. 
na convene siya mga kapaglaom sa ang 2023 na lead conference diri sa General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists. Last October 5, 2023, the lead or leadership education and discipleship conference nag explore siya sa usa ka importante na, te na tema mo kini ang mission refocus or discipleship or disciple making and it was designed mga kapaglaom to encourage or to ignite the passion of our members labaw na sa delegates nato dito sa general conference last council meeting sa pag disciple making o sa paglantaw sa mission in a whole new way. Kanin picture mga kapaglaom, mo kini si Pastor Ayrton C. Coller, usa ka executive secretary sa General Conference o one of the key speakers during the plenary. Sa yung mensahe mga kapaglaom, na usa ka urgent appeal na gitawag sa tanan delegado atong panahuna o sa atua karon isip usa ka iglesia last October. It's not only a call to leadership, but also a call to us, mga membro, to embrace also the mission in a new way. So, monang mga kapaglaom, in this series of ours, we are going to explore the importance of mission refocus. And for tonight's episode, we'll be understanding mission refocus, an urgent call. So, before that, mga kapaglaom, Ako giawhag ang tanan na magduko sa itong mga ulo alang sa pag-ampo. Mag-ampo ta. Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, we are ready to hear your message. An important message for us to know about our mission and what it's like to be in the mission refocus. Dear Father, I pray, especially to our viewers, that they are ready to hear your words today. And I pray, dear Father, that you would enlighten us more with the present situation that is happening in the church. Lord, please be with us, empty us, and fill us with your knowledge and your wisdom today. For this we ask and pray through your Son, Jesus. Amen. Mga kapaglaom, what comes in your mind when you hear the word mission? Kung sa business concept pa mga kapaglaom, ang mission is usaka reason or purpose nga no ang usaka organisasyon nag-thrive. It can be found in various companies, both small and big. But for us Seventh-day Adventists, lalo na sa church, mission is often associated with reaching the world. It means reaching here sa laing laing dapita diri sa Mindanao, sa Pilipinas, o sa Tibuok, Kalibutan. Apan mga kapaglaom, tonight, ato po ma-understand ang mission refocus na ato po masabdan na asa tan apart, we should efficiently reach the world. Labaw na sa impact o sa mga factors Mga changes na nahitabo diri sa kalibutan because the world is never the same as before. So, unsa maning mga scenarios na nag affect sa tuang iglesia karon? Whether we like it mga kapaglaom, we need to understand na kani mga scenarios is observable diri sa tuang way of life o labaw na sa tuang relations, sa tuang relasyon sa laing tao, o labaw na sa atong Panginoon. So the first factor mga kapaglaom na gikonsider po nato an impact to the church is global factors. And it changes how we perceive the mission. First up is the pandemic. Most notably, the COVID-19 pandemic. That is the recent pandemic that poses a threat to our human race. Labaw na mga kapaglaom na niabot yun sa panahon na nag-introspecta or nag-question po sa atong kagalingon o ni pave way po sa gitawag na new normal. Apan mga kapaglaom, kaning pandemic, di po niya basta-basta kay according to the World Health Organization, sadly, 
approximately 14.9 million people died in 2020 and 2021 alone tungod lang aning pandemic or COVID-19. Atong ikumpara ni siya sa World War I na ang death toll po ato na tayo mga kapaglaom is over 15 million people in terms of fatality. So imagine mga kapaglaom, ang COVID-19 pandemic alone, mura na siya og world war na millions of people na nga matay tungod ani. And it is something na na-consider na to an impact, lalo na sa ato ang church karon. A second global factor is war. Most recently, mga kapaglaom, we observe a complex situation na nahitabo karon sa Gaza o sa Israel. But, di po na ito madinay na padayon gyapon ang gera nga sa Ukraine versus sa invasion sa Russia. And nabi pa ninyo mga kapaglaom, gihatag dyo siya o uh, pansin sa tibok kalibutan. Ang NATO nations nag work on na sila o labaw na mga kapaglaom na yung mga hearsays, mga rumors about wars to come. And ang war, mga kapaglaom, dili dyan siya maayo. Labaw na kay it can give catastrophic effect nga to sa usa ka bansa. Sa food, sa energy, o bisan pa man sa agriculture. Matod pa sa mga experts, mga kapaglaom, nag-evaluate sila na kita karon naga face ta sa usa ka catastrophic scenario na unthinkable sa tua karon na na-observe pa nila few months ago. And apil na ini mga kapaglaom, the possibility of using nuclear weapons. Dili man siya bago sa itong paningin because it already happened during World War II sa Japan. And sa duha lang na nuclear weapons nag utilize it causes a catastrophic effect to the country. And it would be much worse knowing na karun over several countries naga possess na nuclear weapons and it could cause catastrophic effect not only to a few regions but also to the entire world. Not only sa nuclear capabilities, mga kapaglaom, na po yung mga potential na mga problema sa usa ka bansa, lalo na sa political instability, na nagaprepare pag more coups, violence, revolution, o uban pa na mga methods na dili ta gusto maka-experience. Recently po sa Myanmar, tungod sa military coup na nagahamper sa demokrasya sa Myanmar, na nag affect po sa mga katawahan dito. Another aspect sa global factors is ecology. Most notably, mga kapaglaom, ang climate change due to global warming. And believe me, dako kay siya na impact nga to sa tuang dapit diri sa Mindanao. Most notably, sa Typhoon Odette na na-affect ang part diri sa Northeastern Mindanao Mission, most specifically sa Surigao. The global forest, in fact, mga kapaglaom, has been reduced by more than 50% since the 1960s. And each hour, mga kapaglaom, ang forest na, na size of 300 football fields, nagakat down siya every hour, mga kapaglaom. And experts have told that in the year 2030, ang atong planet may have 10% of forest land, of forest area left. Kung nga nagyapunta pa dayon sa itong mga unsustainable practices. And tungod ani mga kapaglaom, because of the increasing temperature or the global warming here in our world, sea levels are rising more than twice as fast as before. In fact, the United Nations said na by 2025, nearly 1.8 billion people will live in areas with absolute water scarcity. What does it tell us, mga kapaglaom? It tells us na ang mga tao, mga 1.8 billion people na mga tao na nagapuyo sa areas with, with absolute water scarcity will face water crisis and would potentially face what we call the water war or paggamit sa tubig sa pag-take advantage sa mga laing-laing mga bansa. So that's why mga kapaglaom, 
kani mga factors sa ecology, war, o sa pandemic, nag-change yun siya sa atong impact nga to sa paglantaw sa atong mission isip o sa kaiglesya. Apart from the global factors, mga kapaglaom, napotay gitawag the social scene na ang mga social factors nag affect sa atong iglesia karon. The first one is the me generation. Mao ni atong mga baby boomers na nag nagaborn or the generation that was born after World War II. And kabalo mo mga kapaglaom, mao po na time na ang kanina henerasyon nag Puyo sila sa usa ka challenging time na daghan kay mga kabaguhan lalo na sa social o sa political na aspect. According pa sa Time Magazine, kaning me generation prepared the way para sila mga anak na atong gitawag the me 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 generation or atong gitawag na mga millennials. Mao ni ang gitawag na the selfie generation na nagasugod sa 2000s. And Matud pa sa Time Magazine, mo po ni na henerasyon na nag-grew up sa internet o gitawag sila mga digital natives o global generation. According sa ato ang uh, ex executive secretary sa General Conference, si Pastor Erton, the me, me, me generation is emotionally weak, emotionally weak but at the same time eager to defend justice and constantly seeking to live a meaningful life. So no wonder ma-observe po nato sa ato mga palibot na bisag unsa na lang na kamatuuran na ilang gusto itukod or mga rights na gusto nila i-uphold, mga prinsipyo na gusto nila i-keep hangtod sa kamatayon. Apan mga kapaglaom, it's a challenge para sa ining henerasyon, labi nag sa me, me, me generation, sa pag-worship sa atong usaka sovereign God, sa pag-interact sa mga katawahan, lalo na sa worship services, o sa pag-obey sa rules of conduct. Because again, this generation also um, nag-experience po sila o crisis sa pagkabalo what is right and what is wrong, lalo na sa exposure sa social media. And it makes their ties to religious organizations a significant challenge. Most notably, mga kapaglaom, na ma-observe po nato sa laing part sa kalibutan that is a European nation na ang ato mga millennials nag experience sila o crisis matod sila morality because they don't know what is the true right or wrong anymore tungod sa exposure sa laing-laing mga information o mga prinsipo sa niabot sila. And it really poses sa tuwang mission us isip usak iglesia mga kapaglaom. Another is human sexuality. We live in a time when everyone can claim the right to be any gender they want, whether it be male, female, non-binary, LGBTQIA+, or even, matod pa sa Facebook, 58 different genders na available sa itong mga users. But sa Facebook pa lang na, na 58 ang different genders mga kapaglaom. How much more sa uban lista na niabot ng 67, 81, o 107 ka different genders na pwede nila mapili. Grabe na dyan ka ron ang definition sa human sexuality matod pas kalibutan mga kapaglaom. Apan, the Bible's perspective and God's plan about human sexuality is much more than merely an identification mga kapaglaom. And it is much broader than the current trends and that's why we have to tailor the mission nato karon na ma-approach nato ang ingani na marginalized sectors kalibutan with a biblically clear manner but also approach in kindness. Next one mga kapaglaom is social polarization. We face social polarization daily mga kapaglaom. Most notably sa social media, sa politics, sa families, and unfortunately, mga kapaglaom, also in the life of the church. To give you context, mga kapaglaom, observe sa ato ang last na elections. Nadaghan kay tag mga opinions about from one candidate to another. Na to the point, mga kapaglaom, that we question someone's entire life because of his political choice. That is what we call 
social polarization that matutpan ini that it is the rise of an us versus them mindset affecting all human relationships as what they have given a context mga kapaglaom sa last na to na elections look what happened friendships naga broken families naga distrust ang mga motibo nga lahi na tungod sa pagka polarization sa ilang mga ideas mga tinuhan and that's why mga, mga kapaglaom sadly it also affects the life of the church acute cynicism towards all authorities including the church has led to a systematic deconstruction of the truth and common sense most notably mga kapaglaom sa church knowing that we have different principles sa tibo kalibutan sometimes mapolarize ta sa ato ang beliefs na it would ruin relationships and would hamper the church as a whole so that's why isip mga batanon o isip iglesia we must look into further on how we could adjust to the new normal especially sa pagthrive ining problema nato karon sa social polarization and then we have technology this is the third scenario na ato ma-observe na nag-impact, observable impact jud siya sa atong kalibutan, labaw na sa church. Sa social media, mga kapaglaom, almost 60% sa tibo kalibutan na anay social media. And even approximately each day, over 410,000 nagadugang na mga social media users. Abi pa ninyo, mga kapaglaom, each user spends an average of 2 hours and 24 minutes daily sa paggamit sa social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you name it. And it try na to multiply ang 2 hours o 24 minutes sa number of social media users present today. Ang result ana mga kapaglaom is shocking with over 11.5 billion hours spent on social media sa isa lang kaadlaw. Imagine, it would be approximately 1.3 million years on social media every day. Kung iisa na tutanan ang number of hours na naga-utilize ang usaka social media user sa usaka adlaw. However, mga kapaglaom, it poses a threat not only sa tibo kalibutan in terms of its damaging effects, but it would also observable nga to sa spiritual life sa itong mga kapaglaom, lalo na sa itong mga kabatanunan. It changes how our brain functions. It reduces the ability to make decisions, attention, focus, impulse control, and even short-term memory. Matut pa mga kapaglaom that the results are evident in the ability to concentrate to attend services, to study the Bible, and to pray. For example, we have in our church, na though we have our services, we have our message, na ajoy ato mga kaigsunan, our members, our young people, na got spend time in their phones while looking, on, while naagyapon ang sermon. And most notably mga kapaglaom, is the rise of artificial intelligence. So I believe this is a trending topic because it creates a recent it, it creates a recent and intense change ng sa toang technological landscape. It is the talk of the town in the field of uh, in the field of technology and the digital landscape. Especially that its impact sa atong society karon is both exciting and challenging. Ako yung share sa inyo mga kapaglaom, that how the artificial intelligence make an impact nga to sa academe. Especially kay I've been observing several discussions about uh, seminars contemplating about the use of artificial intelligence nga to sa toang institutions. Especially mga kapaglaom na uh, artificial intelligence can also create an impact to our academic integrity that it would also help the student and at the same time harm them in expressing their understandings of the topic. And that is just for the academe, mga kapaglaom. How much more pag abut na sa church life? In fact, mga kapaglaom, sa Germany, last June, 
more than 300 Protestants attended the first church service generated almost entirely by artificial intelligence. Imagine mga kapaglaom, an AI church intended for the worshippers. A chat GPT bot led the worshippers through 40 minutes of prayer, music, sermons, and blessing. So again, it's exciting and scary at the same time, mga kapaglaong. So that was it for our technological landscape that gives us a big impact ngadto sa atong iglesia o sa atong mission, mga kapaglaong. And lastly, we have the mission itself. Presently, mga kapaglaong, ang atong pag-send out sa mga missionary sa line-line dapitas kalibutan naga na impact po siya sa atong mga sa atong Christian world today. According sa mga missiologists, nag-explain sila na there is a shift from old sending countries to new sending countries. O say pasabot sa old sending countries mga kapaglaom. Ang old sending countries mao ning mga magipang sent na mga missionaries dito sa mga bansa for more than 100 years such as in Australia, Canada, Denmark, Germany, United Kingdom, and the United States. Whereas the new sending countries are those countries that have recently begun to send missionaries in significant numbers, though bago sila, apan daghan kisila gi-send out na mga missionaries. Most notably mga kapaglaom sa Brazil, Costa Rica, Ghana, India, South Korea, Nigeria, Singapore, China, and most notably, here in the Philippines. These now contribute 47% of the total of missionaries being sent. So imagine mga kapaglaom, we are shifting to the new sending na mga countries na wala kayo na penetrate, labaw na sa atong missionaries. Especially in the 1040 window, across the parts of Asia. So we know now that there are a lot of factors that affected the way we do our mission, the way we answer the call that is to spread the message, make disciples. That's why, mga kapaglaom, it is a time Matud pa sa last council or lead conference that we need to see things differently. We always tend to look in our binoculars on the present challenges that we face. We understand how we use our binoculars. We see things in our own perspective. But imagine turning them around to change how we use them. If binoculars are used normally, they magnify what you see. But if you hold them in reverse, if you have used a binocular before, they diminish what we can see. However, ang problema is nagyapon. Ang mga challenges nagyapon. The factors that affect the church is still the same, but it is up to us how we could see it. We can see it actually by changing how we see things. And the challenge today is to see the changes in the world, gaya ng global, social, technological, and the mission in an, as an opportunity for mission. Missionary focus is a change in how we use our binoculars. New methods must be introduced. God's people must awake to the necessities of the time in which they are living. And that is why, mga kapaglaom, today, we must evaluate the changes that we could see it as an opportunity in refocusing our mission. First one is the Holy Spirit. The guidance of the Holy Spirit needs to be first when we, when we re-evaluate the things here in this world. In fact, kung ma-observe nato sa itong kalibutan karon na grabe na complicated 
then the Holy Spirit is much more needed. That's why whenever we go to the cities, to the urban centers, and even to the far-reaching parts of the world, we must always seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and that we must be sanctified by, fair, by prayer and by faith, by the merits of Christ, that we may be able to do the work efficiently. Kabalo mo makapaglaom? What, what you see here is a, is a picture of the depiction of the day of Pentecost. If you have observed before, ang mga tao na na time, di sila kas, wa sila kasabot unsa ilang buhaton in doing the mission before. But through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they are renewed, they are, reinver- they are invigorated, they have been refocused on what to do with the mission. And I tell you mga kapaglaom, that the same outpouring of the Holy Spirit back in the day of Pentecost is the same Holy Spirit that outpours us today, especially in these challenging times. Next up is presenting the message itself, mga kapaglaom. Bisan pa man sa gera, sa mga tensions na nanghitabo ka ron o sa polarization sa atong social landscape, ang mga katawahan ka ron, nangita jud sila o anchor o sa solid base, something na ila jud makita everyday. People are looking for authentic things. They're looking for balance. Mga kapaglaom, they are, like, they are like us. They are looking for hope o paglaom po. Churches that lose their identity and their authenticity also lose their relevance. Identity is non-negotiable. That's why Ellen White stated, and I quote, Conformity to the worldly customs converts the church to the world. It never converts the world to Christ. Sometimes mga kapaglaom, tungod sa trends diri sa kalibutan, malibog po ta how we should put things in church and outside of the church. Because again, we must not be conformed to the world, but let us be renewed in Christ. Our problem today is not that the boat is in the water. Dili kay ang atong iglesia na ara diri sa kalibutan. But atong problema karon is the worldly customs that puts the church at risk. So that's why as an Adventist church, isip usaka iglesia, we must not be conformed of the world because it never converts the world. It never uh, converts the world to Christ, but rather, if we conform to the worldly customs, it converts the church to the world. Disciple-making is one of the emphasis of our mission refocus. Disciple-making is the best way to reach hearts of people in the world. That's why the Great Commission states that we must go, therefore, and make disciples. Mga kapaglaom, karong panahon, ang mga tao kay grabi ka sentro sa ilang sarili. Na ilang focus na shift from being spiritual nga to sa Panginoon, niabot na sa ilang personal. Sa group na setting, na imo ng individual, from being selfless, na imo ng self-centered. From the soul to the self, from salvation of Christ to self-fulfillment, they're eager for real people, real relationships, real love, and real hope. That's why when we share the message, we must incorporate disciple-making because people want 
to be to love and to be loved. And disciple making is the perfect method in this kind of environment. Disciple making isn't just about sharing the gospel. It's about people taking care of people. It's a result of sharing the love of Christ. People transforming people and people multiplying people. Mga an important way to see challenges as an opportunity is technology. Technology is overcoming all borders and barriers. Without the use of technology, mga kapaglaom, like radio technology, na nag ta sa maayong balita, pinaagi sa Hope Radio o sa AWR. How about sa television na technologies that it paved way for our viewers sa satellite na makalantaw sa maayong balita, labaw na diri sa Hope Channel. O bisan pa man mga kapaglaom, sa, sa rise sa technology, sa internet, na gihatag tag ini kay gayon na ma-broadcast siya dili lang sa tong local na satellite, but sa tibuok nga kalibutan. We have ways as never before to reach the 8 billion people in the world without borders. Technology can reach everybody, everywhere, and at any time. We can be more aggressive using technology and social media for the mission. Of course, we started with literature or printed materials, to radio, to television, and what else opportunities that we could utilize for the gospel. Social media, AI, chat GPT, mga new apps, other technological resources that we can use for a positive difference in the care of our members. Labinag sa pag-accomplish sa mission na giintra sa Panginoon ngadto sa tua. Mga kapaglaom. I take note that when we use the technology for, for the glory of God, it can create a positive difference, thus making our mission refocus pa. And the last thing is, Sending missionaries. Most notably, mga kapaglaom, we are facing the most complex crisis and changes in recent history. But at the same time, bisag unsa pa ka mga challenges na nga sa tibo kalibutan, it poses us an exciting na mission opportunities na gihatag nga sa tua, mga kapaglaom. Matod pa sa, sa council na discussion, that we must send missionaries from everywhere to everywhere. Matod pa ni Ellen White, we're, where are the missionaries who should be raised up at the heart of the work? From 20 to 50 should be sent out from Battle Creek every year to carry the truth to those who sit in darkness. And mga kapaglaom, girait pa niya ning message Ning quote, tong panahon na 17,000 pa ang mga members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And in North America pa jud, mga kapaglaom. He re- she requested that in every 1,000 church members, tulura ipang send out. And that was a century ago. Today, we are about 25, 22 million plus members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And if we follow nato pud ang instructions ni Ellen White na to send out three missionaries for every 1,000 mga members worldwide, then we would need to send 67,667 missionaries per year. And, mga kapaglaom, that is by far, far, far from reality. So that's why, mga kapaglaom, missionary focus is a change in how we use our binoculars, how we introduce new methods. 
It is awakened to the necessities of the time for us karon. Mission refocus is our urgent priority. In fact, matod pa ni Ellen White, when the members of the Church of God do their appointed work in the needy fields at home and abroad, in fulfillment of the Gospel Commission, the whole world will soon be warned and the Lord Jesus will return to this earth with power and great glory. So that's why, mga kapaglaom, in this, in this series of ours, we hope na mas ma-enlighten pa ta what it takes to have missionary focus. And most especially, mga kapaglaom, how we should also be part of that great cause to refocus, to change our binoculars, to see things differently, and to take challenges as an opportunity for us to do the mission. Before I end this message, mga kapaglaom, may offer a prayer to all of us, lalo na sa Tua Karon, mga viewers sa Hope Channel o sa mga tigpaminaw sa radio stations. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given to us. Today, we understand how important for us to accept the call that is to refocus our mission. Our mission is stemmed from your commission, Heavenly Father, that is to go to reach the world and to make disciples. Dear Father, we see now that there are many challenges that have impacted the world today, most notably here in the church. And I pray, dear Father, that as we go through this week to understand more what it means to refocus our mission, I pray that all of the viewers will be more blessed and they will engage more towards being part of this amazing opportunity that is the mission refocus. I hope, dear Father, that You'll be with them, you'll guide them, you'll guide all of us, especially, O Lord, as a church, that we would spread the gospel in new perspectives, in new methods, in a way that it will not compromise or push our church in conformity to the world, but rather be renewed in you, dear Father. Thank you so much, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers. For this we ask and pray, through your Son Jesus, Amen. betrayed the child who is afraid for the home that is broken but as cars of sin and shame there is hope and there is healing in the power of Jesus name there is a way there confused the one who is abused for the world that needs mercy and the
the truth that makes us free. There's forgiveness.